Hey gang, Nick Howell back with you uh, from NetApp, tech marketing engineer for the VMware space. If you haven't yet watched it, go back and watch the introduction video uh, that shows you where to get the download, uh, where, what you need to do to set it up and get it installed. We're going to pick up where we left off, uh, assuming that it's installed at this point. So if you need to go back and find it, go ahead and watch that video first. Uh, if you're interested in some more deep dive stuff about each of these uh, areas and how the NetApp plugin can help you uh, manage your vSphere environment, the storage side of your vSphere environment, you're in the right place. So let's jump right in. Um, we're in our vSphere environment here. I'll give you a quick preview. It's just a quick demo environment. Uh, there's a lot of purposely named VMs here to take advantage of some of this stuff. Two ESX hosts, uh, one data center, one vCenter instance. If we go back to the home screen, we're going to click on the NetApp tab. Now, if you notice, we've got the VSC is basically broken down into four what we call sub plugins internally, but just four, four functional areas uh, monitoring and host configuration, provisioning and cloning, optimization and migration, and backup and recovery. Uh, on this one, we're going to focus on monitoring and host configuration because this is where you'll, s this is where you'll spend a lot of time up front. Uh, initially getting things configured, setting things up properly, and it's one of those set it and forget it kind of areas. Once you set up these, all of these things the right way the first time, a lot of your other operational time will be spent in these other functional areas. Um, what I want to start off with first is the ESX host section that you see right here. Uh, you see some alerts coming up here and that's all fine. We're not gonna we're gonna pay much attention to the status right here, but the adapter settings and the NFS settings is what I want to call out to. You. So to give you a little bit of history here, few few years ago, five six years ago, we used to have something that was called the HUC, the Host Utilities Kit, and it was used to run on an ESX host back in the ESX three days to set pr proprietary settings that would allow an ESX host to tolerate a NetApp storage controller cluster failover. In the event of hardware or network connectivity loss or anything like that, we extend the timeouts that EXX sets by default to uh, tolerate that cluster failover. Uh, that was all, it was a very manual thing. You had to, you know, win SCP or copy a file over to a host and if you had 20 hosts it was a big nightmare and you had to do it all in a very manual fashion. Sure you could script it if you were a scripting wizard but it was still rather annoying. When the first iteration of the VSC came out, it was mostly centered around this monitoring and host configuration screen that we're looking at now. And one of the very first things we wanted to do was automate the, the, the push down of these recommended settings. That's what we, we like to call them. Uh, they are best practice settings. They are not hard requirements. But what we have found uh, through data mining our NGS support systems, uh, the, the calls that come in, is that almost 70% of our calls that come into our support center that are related to VMware are solved by the application of these settings. So this is why it's very important that you use this. We allow you to set these settings in a couple of mouse clicks here that I'm going to demonstrate for you. But I just want to reiterate how important it is that you do this because if you do not and you experience a hardware failure of any sort, uh, you, it, it's likely going to cause your data stores to go offline, to cause virtual machines to go offline, all those sorts of bad things that tend to snowball and happen and makes your data center a big mess. With the quick settings here, everything usually works out just fine for you. You will be operating under NetApp documented best practices by doing this, and it's very, very highly recommended. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to do a show details. I, all I'm doing is right-clicking on this individual host, and I'm going to do a show details. If you're really into the nitty-gritty details and want to get into the into the weeds, you can go down and look through these and pull through all of them, see what we're changing, see what we're setting, what the settings are set at. If you want to just get right to it, right-click, set recommended values. It's going to bring up this, these, this pane with three checkboxes. Let me explain each of these to you. The HBNA CNA adapter settings box is for when you have uh, expansion cards fiber channel adapters or converged network adapters that are in your ESX hosts that are that need special settings uh, that are above and beyond what ESX provides. So if, if you're bringing in hardware assisted type of hardware, if you're bringing in hardware and introducing it into the ESX environment, ESX is going to leverage that. <coughs> Excuse me. But we want to uh, modify some of those settings as well, not just the ESX ones. That's what this is for. This is mostly based around Fiber Channel and FCOE. 
Uh, we're not doing that in this environment, so we're going to uncheck that. MPIO is your preferred FAS. MPIO is going to go out and check all of your paths that are available, determine which ones are the best, which ones are optimized and not optimized, and it's going to set that preferred path. Again, we're going to focus on the NFS side of things for right now because this is a demo environment and I do not currently have uh, any sort of fiber channel stuff set up. Uh, NFS is the one that's most popular with us. Uh, we, it's, I, I'm a personal fanboy of NFS. You know, you'll see me tout NAS for life, all those kinds of things out there. But we really want to, uh, to push NFS, especially with the advent of 10 gig in the last few years. So in this quick little demo here, I'm going to show you that it takes a couple of seconds to apply this to an ESX host. All I'm going to do is click OK. If we look down here, it's updated. The checkbox turned green. It applied three different option values for NFS. Basically, extended the disk timeouts for when a it loses when a ESX host loses connection to a data store, which is essentially a back-end volume on the storage controller. We extended the value that that is going to ping. That it's going to wait for that data store to come back online. Now, when the, when it goes when the data store goes offline or it can't talk to it, it sends the VM into a stunned state or a read-only state. Uh, the VM, the operating systems of today are very good about doing this, uh, waiting for the storage to respond. The VMs are going to be fine until the storage come back and says, I can't talk to you anymore, and then they're going to go crazy. So as long as we extend these timeouts, everything should be fine. That to me is, this. what we just did right here is one of the most compelling features. This is telling you it's pending reboot right here. It's not necessary with NFS. We change those settings non-disruptively. Because of the uh, hardware nature of the HBA and CNA stuff, it does require a reboot because we're modifying non-native stuff. So if you have a third-party HBA or third-party CNA, you need to reboot the host so that those settings can take effect. So that's ESX host. Please definitely use this. It, it is very, very valuable. The next thing I wanted to show you, uh, and you'll notice that this is our new cluster mode stuff that we've been playing with here that we introduced earlier this year is uh, storage controllers. What this does is it gives the virtualization administrator uh, just enough visibility into the underlying storage that his environment lives in. Uh, it, I, I, we have an internal argument all the time about who should see what and who should do what to what. And it's a very gray area. It's a fine line to walk where we're, these lines are blurring between storage admins and server systems, virtualization admins, who's going to come in and do what. And we kind of went through this about f four or five years ago with the network admins when ESX3 was out and all of a sudden we had these things called virtual switches and the network admins went crazy because they didn't manage the network stuff anymore. Those of you that have been around virtualization are probably pretty sensitive to that and know, remember that stuff very well. The same kind of thing is starting to happen with storage. Storage is getting commoditized, it's being pushed further up stack into the hypervisors, all that sort of stuff. So what we're giving here is a little bit of visibility to these virtualization admins to be able to see what's going on as well as even the storage admins if they want to run a version of the of the if they want to open the vSphere client themselves and be able to see and manage some of these things we have some built-in built-in right-click menus into these items as well uh, you can manually add systems uh, in case they didn't get picked up in the discovery you can modify the credentials that these controllers are connecting with uh, when you first load them in they'll show up as unknown and you'll need to right-click on them and modify credentials and put in a controller uh, username and password that the storage admin can control. Now this gives you a lot of granularity with RBAC so if you want to just if you're a generalist and you're managing both the virtualization environment and the storage you can just put in your root credentials here because you're probably going to be doing this stuff anyway. If you're a storage admin you can come into this and create user accounts on the storage and then come into the vSphere client and apply specific RBAC based uh, user accounts that the virtualization admin can only do certain things to certain things. So it works out, it's kind of a best of both worlds scenario. Uh, I can tell you that going forward we are going to integrate this more into the native vSphere credentials. Uh, so you're going to see more and more stuff like that going forward. Other things that you can do here, um, if you wanted to click on a specific storage controller and see which hosts were potentially connected to it, you could right click on it and we'll show you what hosts have storage connected to that. So if you needed to do something to a host or the storage admin needed to do something to a particular storage system, 
he could come in here and look at what hosts were going to be affected if he were to execute on those changes. The other screens over here on the left under monitoring and host config. Uh, again, I apologize. I don't have anything under SAN at, at this time because of the la nature of the lab environment. But we do have some various NFS volumes in here that are attached to this vServer. Um, and what this gives you the capability to do is get a little bit more storage specific details. It allows you to, if you're a virtualization admin, it allows you to talk the talk of the storage admin. So if you have a problem with something and you notice you have a problem with a VM that's in this NFS to move data store, then you can go and tell him, you know, the entire mount path. You can tell him uh, what aggregate it's on. You can tell him all kinds of special information. You can view certain hosts about things. You can see the usage of the aggregate to the volume to the data store. So if it's fiber channel, such as up here in SAN, you can have multiple LUNs in a single volume, so you'll be able to see all three tiers uh, of storage utilization throughout there. The tools section is the one I want to spend quite a bit of time on with you, and I'm actually considering doing a separate video on it. Uh, this is where you get tools such as the MBR Align tool, which we've had around for quite a while. It gives you the ability to uh, actually align uh, misaligned virtual machines from the command line of the NESX host, or you can use the VMA uh, management appliance from VMware. And the other part that I will do a separate video on is our NFS for VAAI or VAAI for NFS plugin. Uh, as you can see down here, we do a quick little walkthrough of how to install it, orchestrate the installation of this plugin on your host so that you can take advantage of all kinds of other things. We'll come back to that another time in another video. Uh, this has been monitoring and host configuration, quick little walkthrough, and I just wanted to introduce you to some of the product. All right. Stick around, be sure and check out the other videos as they pop up, and uh, we'll see you later.